Hello friends, in today's video I want to talk you through how I upcycled this jewellery box that I once again found in my local charity shop. I want to talk you through how I went from this to this and I ended up using several different decoupage and decorating techniques so hopefully maybe you will learn something new today or this will give you some ideas for how you can maybe upcycle or just decorate a brand new box for yourself or somebody special in your life. So the first thing that I did was take off the hardware off of the jewellery box. If there is any hardware on the item that you're working on, it is always best to take it off if you're able to, as it makes the process so, so, so much easier. <laughs> you don't have to worry about getting any of the hardware dirty with paint and you can get in all of the little nooks and crannies there. I also ripped out the inside lining. It was lined with this velvety type thing, but it was all very old and very dusty. So I decided to get rid of it. And once the hardware and the lining were off, I sanded down the jewelry box. I ended up using, I believe, 80 grit sandpaper on this jewelry box. It did get quite messy, but it was a quite important step that I wanted to take. And once I had sanded it, I applied two coats of my Rust-Oleum white chalk paint and that served as a primer and it also helped even out the surface. Next, I take my air drying clay. The clay that I used for this is Hobbycraft's own brand. It's not the best for using in molds as it can be very hard. It takes a lot of work to get it nice and soft. And I rolled it out till it was about five millimeters thick. And I actually took my redesign with Prima transfer tube and I cut out a circle with that and it turned out to be the exact size that I needed it to be for my printout. Then I glued it on using my trade PVA glue and I left it to dry for about 24 hours. Once the little circle was fully dry I took my printout and I cut it out and I decoupaged it on top of the little clay circle. So the picture that I used for this is from Digital Collage Club. It is a website where you can find loads of amazing beautiful images specifically designed for paper crafters. For full transparency they actually reached out to me and um, they have provided me with a membership to their club in return for me using their pictures in some of my projects, which I am absolutely happy to do because the pictures that they have on their website are absolutely amazing for my kind of style of work. And also I know that a lot of people that watch my videos don't come from decoupage background, but rather they come from paper crafting background and they have an amazing selection, perfect for journaling and card making and things like that. So I ended up downloading this set of Marie Antoinette circles. I will link the page down below for you if you would like to check it out. I printed it out on my inkjet printer, so I just have a normal Canon printer at home. I printed it out on photo paper, that is important, use photo paper. I thinned it out using sellotape, sprayed it with water, left it for a couple of minutes till it was, till the water had soaked the image. And then I glued on the photo using Mod Podge. So I apply a layer of Mod Podge. Then I used a cloth to dab it down and get all of the um, air bubbles out because the image is so small. I just used the cloth rather than my roller that I would usually use. And then I applied another layer of Mod Podge and left it to dry. Next, I decorated the body of the jewellery box. So these little stick out bits in the middle, I ended up using uh, papers out of a paper pad that I actually bought from the range. And so I roughly measured out how thick my paper needs to be. I bent the paper around the corner bits and then cut them to fit the shape. And that was mainly not for precision, but for me to be able to actually work on all sides rather than apply one side wait for it to dry, sand it down, then apply the next one. So it just, it just allows for me to work a lot faster. So once I had all four sides measured out, I sprayed them with water and left them to soak for a little bit. Then again, I apply a layer of Mod Podge put my paper on, stick it down using my fingers and using the cloth that I used earlier. Make sure that there's no excess glue underneath or any air bubbles or anything like that. And then using sandpaper, I gently sanded off the edges where it was overlapping 
just so that I was able to work on the next side and then apply another layer of Mod Podge over the top and move on to the next side. By the time I was done with the body of the box, my Marie Antoinette was dry and I took a little bit of sandpaper once again and I sanded off any paper that was overhanging over the little circle bit. To be honest, I probably should have waited a little bit longer because I did end up tearing the paper a little bit more than what I should have really done. However, as I applied the mold over the edges of the circle, it didn't really matter because you couldn't really see it anyways. Just another tip, be a bit more patient than I am. I always struggle with that. So once everything was fully dry, I went ahead and I started applying my mold. So I ended up using two of my Redesign with Prima molds and one of my other cake silicone molds. The clay that I'm using is Das Air Drying Clay. And so what I do is I put it into the mold. I use a palette knife to cut the excess clay off. Then using my fingers, I make sure that all of the clay is sitting in nicely in the mold. And then I take it outside of the mold and I apply Trade PVA glue. So this is by the brand Dial. And I kept on doing that until I was happy with how my box had transformed. So I applied Prima molds to frame Mario Antoinette. Then I used my little rope mold to add a little bit more dimension to the little framing of the lid of the box. I actually ended up using a lot of clay in this, in this project. Next I applied some more of these border molds onto the body of the box and I applied ropes on either side of the paper that I applied into the middle of the box and that helps to mask the paper border. And then I made some more roses out of Prima molds and applied it to the bottom of the box. And I repeated it on all four sides once again. Next I decided to decorate the inside of the lid as well. So I applied one of these keyhole um, elements out of a Prima mold again. And the important part in this one is to apply it the right side down. So when you open the lid, it's actually facing the right way. And then I took some more of my little ropes and I applied it on the inside edges of the lid. Once my molds were fully dry, I decided that that wasn't enough. And I also wanted to add a little bit of contour liner. So the contour liner that I'm using is by Pebio. And I kind of made this pattern all around the border molds using the kind of dot and drag technique. And I also did the same thing on the inside and the outside of the lid. And I left it to dry. And then it was time to paint. So I ended up going for this sage green pre-mixed paint that I already had from, um, from my mirror repaint. And I mixed up this burgundy paint um, as well. So, so it's difficult for me to describe how I got these colors because well, with this sage green one, I can't even remember what I mixed in there. But most of my custom mixed colors that I have are a mix of acrylics and white chalk paint for the base. So I use white chalk paint as a base and then I add in my acrylic paints to mix up the color that I need. So as you can see, I ended up going for the split color look. So burgundy on the bottom, green in the middle, and then burgundy and green on the lid. And I applied two coats of each paint and then applied one layer of water-based gloss varnish over the whole thing. So this step is very, very important. I did not actually film it for some reason. I completely forgot about it, but it is very, very important before we do the next step, varnish it with water-based gloss varnish. And so here it is, two coats of each paint and gloss varnish over the top. Next, what we're gonna do is age. This process can get really, really messy. So um, so if you don't like getting dirty hands, this might not be the channel for you. <laughs> so I, I made a mix of brown and black acrylic paints, watered it down a tiny little bit, and then I took a synthetic brush and went to town <laughs> with just putting it everywhere over everything. So this can be a little bit scary, but don't worry, you just varnished your piece. So this is a kind of way of antiquing or glazing or whatever else you want to call it. I don't really know the right term for whatever I'm doing here. Because you've applied gloss varnish onto your paint, um, it allows for you to wipe it away. Since you are using acrylic and watered down paint, 
it's it doesn't dry very quickly so it allows you a little bit of time to actually wipe away any excess and because i had applied quite a bit of 3d elements there so i have the molds i have the contour liner what happens is that when i wipe it away any excess actually ends up staying inside of the in the deep bits of my 3d elements so it doesn't wipe away from inside there however it wipes away from any of the top bits and that's what gives you a 3d element more dimension and so i repeat this process everywhere across the board so inside outside top and bottom until i am fully happy with it and as you can see, I'm also going over the picture itself and that is absolutely fine. Don't, don't be scared of doing that. As long as you've varnished your piece, you will be able to wipe it away. And even if the paint has started to dry up a little bit and there's a bit that you can't wipe away, uh, just dip your cloth in a little bit of water and it will come off. Once I had aged my piece, I realized that it was a little bit too dark and I wanted to lighten it up a little bit and age it furthermore. And so I took a little bit of my white chalk paint and mixed in tiny little bits of both the burgundy and the sage paint and using my natural bristle brush and a dry brushing technique, I brushed on little bits of each paint over the burgundy and the sage green ones accordingly and left it to dry for about half a day. After it was fully dry, I applied my varnish. Once again, I used Polyvan Heavy Duty Wood Varnish in dead flat finish. The reason why I've been using this varnish so much is because it's completely non-stick and in my experience, it's literally the first varnish that I've found that is genuinely completely non-stick. I ended up applying about three coats of it all across the board and then replaced the hardware with the exception of that top piece because of course, now I have a picture there. And that, my friends, is the end of the video. I really hope that you learned something new or maybe I gave you some ideas for what you could do with something that you already have. I hope that this was helpful. Um, I have actually left links for everything used in this video down in the description below. So some of them links are affiliate links. So I'm affiliated with Amazon. So if you end up purchasing through my link, I may get a small commission from the purchase. Just want to put it out there. Of course, make sure to check out Digital Collage Club. Massive thank you to them for contacting me and wanting to work with me. It is a, it is a great honor. And honestly, I wish that I had known about them much earlier because the pictures that they have are absolutely amazing if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to see more videos from me if you have any suggestions questions anything like that make sure to leave those in the comment section down below or contact me through any of my social media once again links are in the description below and i will see you guys in the next video Bye bye